Denver Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett talked about during Tuesday's OTs how the Broncos defense won the day. We also highlight a specific Broncos player that was mentioned and maybe what his role could be here in 2022, plus which potential players on the offense and defensive side of the ball could general manager George Payton look to trade at some point this offseason or preseason to acquire more draft capital because the Broncos have a loaded roster. You get that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome back into a brand new episode of the Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Senior Broncos Analyst at Mile High Sports, joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantly orange.com. Both of us cover the Broncos for the Lockdown Network and Nine News and Broncos Country. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day, free and available everywhere you get your podcast also available on YouTube where you can watch us. Make sure you hit that subscribe or that follow button if you have yet to do so, as is for daily Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage. Sarah, the Broncos continuing voluntary organized team activities this week, and yesterday was another day of practice. Obviously, they'll be back on the field here today. Nathaniel Hackett met with the media yesterday in Dove Valley, and hey, it was a day where it seems like the Broncos defense took care of business Granted, there's no contact, but defense apparently won the day. That's right. And we have the first interception of OTAs, right? Which is really cool. I, I think that, you know, as much as we've heard about the offense and all the great things that they've been doing, it's kind of nice to hear it go the other way. We, we saw that highlight. Everybody saw that highlight, including Patrick Sertan, who referenced it personally. He referenced that highlight of Cortland Sutton making that catch over the shoulder with him in perfect. He even called his own coverage. He's like, it was perfect coverage. And, and it was. And now he's got the first interception off Russell Wilson or uh, maybe any quarterback of OTA. So it, it's nice to hear the defense have a day out there, especially when we know, hey, they're going up against an elite quarterback now. Russell Wilson out there operating at a high level every single day, making everybody better. Now the defense winning a day. It, it's great to hear. Well, and I think another thing as well, everybody is so excited about the offense, and rightfully so, right? And, and all we've been hearing this offseason, offense, 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 right? But for the most part, and even Nathaniel Hackett even said this, the defense is intact. Like, a lot of those guys played together. So, for them, like, they're getting things, they're picking things up at a high rate here. You mentioned Patrick Sertan. I mean, just the defense in general making plays. Kareem Jackson had a chance to speak with the media yesterday as well at the UCL Training Center. But, yeah, you know, overall, it's, I feel like I would be shocked in a sense if there wasn't conversation about the defense, right? And granted, it's OTAs. There's no contact. There's no pressure on the quarterback. And come training camp, you can't sack your own quarterback. You can't hit your own quarterback. So it's very hard to kind of simulate and maybe get an idea as to who's really winning and who's not and maybe how it translates into the on-field success, you know, this upcoming season. If the offense is lighting it up in training camp, does that mean that the Broncos defense isn't going to be good? I think that there's these myths that we see come out throughout practice, uh, especially in training camp a little bit. And, and like I said, it's just going to come down to the regular season. But Nathaniel Hackett did mention one player, Sarah, and this is a player that we talked about just yesterday, ironically enough, as somebody who's not being talked about enough in OTAs. And Nathaniel Hackett brought up Mike Purcell and said, hey, you know, I didn't realize how – fast he is for his size and how strong he is on the interior there he said we had an outside zone play to the left and he got in the backfield and he stepped down really hard and really disrupted the play there and all of a sudden now he even mentioned that for a guy like Mike Purcell we talk about the addition of DJ Jones but he says that Mike Purcell brings so much to the table for this Broncos defense from a play standpoint when fully healthy and also from a leadership standpoint as a guy who's been in the NFL for 10 years 10 years in the NFL for Mike Purcell here and Sarah as we talked about it we just really hope this is the year he stays healthy and maybe he could return back to the form that got him that three-year contract extension and that's exactly what I think the Broncos defensive line needs because we remember last season, there were times where just games would kind of bleed out over the course of, you know, the third and the fourth quarter. The teams were just able to extend drives because the Broncos could not stop the run. And it wasn't like teams just ran all over them all season. They, they didn't give up 200 yards rushing a game or anything, but it was just kind of like those, those four and five yard gains that were so easy 
for opposing teams to get that I think Mike Purcell can help negate. Now, if, if he's fully healthy, that changes the discussion on him completely because yesterday, you know, before anybody was really talking about him, like my, my perception is, okay, you know, he could either be, uh, you know, cut, he could be traded, he could be a starter, he could be a rotational guy. But I think if, if the best case scenario comes to pass the best case scenario is that Purcell is busting up the line of scrimmage right there in the middle and really causing problems for teams on early downs because that'll allow the Broncos strength to really be amplified throughout the season and what's that strength that strength is going to be pass rush and pass defense because we know they're deep off the edge and they're deep in the defensive backfield and they got a lot of guys that can get their hands on the ball so if Mike Purcell can do his thing I think every there's such a domino effect from that. And it's not to, I'm not trying to just like overhype Mike Purcell, but I think that everybody could see, you know, we referenced this before too. Back in the 2015 season when the Broncos won the Super Bowl, it was so critical that they were able to stop the run on early downs because you force teams into second and long, third and long. And then you get into favorable pass rush situations and it amplifies the strength of your defense and it gives you that flexibility. Remember Wade Phillips, he had the flexibility to send blitzes from wherever he wanted to. He had the uh, he kind of had the ability to experiment with that defense and just say, All right, what do we want to do this week? How do we want to confuse the quarterback this week? Because that run defense was so dominant. So I feel like that's something that Mike Purcell can help kind of restore if he's fully healthy this season for the Denver Broncos. Well, and speaking of restoration, we talked about the Broncos having a lot of players, a lot of very good depth, Sarah, on this roster as is, which could lead to in the preseason, which potential players could be on the trade block for the Broncos. As George Payton has said, after the 2022 NFL draft, he will be acquiring more capital. The Broncos have five picks in the 2023 NFL draft. That's coming up next year. But the bigger question is, how is he going to get more? And we take a look at some players at some very loaded positions that could change the conversation. We get to that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode of the show. It's good friends over there at Built Bar. And as you know, it's the best tasting protein bar on the market. But they're also expanding. They're now adding granola bars to the Built family. And they are finally here. Built granola bars come in three unbelievable flavors. Chocolate peanut butter, chocolate coconut, and white chocolate berry. And if you want to try all three flavors... You can get a mixed box at Built.com right now. And these are so different from the bars and the puffs. Built granola bars are loaded with granola, and it's the perfect combination of crunch and chewiness. But just like the bars and puffs, these babies are packed with protein and covered in 100% real chocolate with 150 calories, 15 grams of protein, and only 4 grams of sugar. Built granola bars will change your world. So go to Built.com here today, and when you go to checkout, make sure you use promo code LOCK15, and that's going to get you 15% off your next order at built.com as we jump into the second half action on today's episode lockdown broncos real quick thank you so much broncos country for making lockdown broncos your first listen of the day every single day but for your second listen after this show make sure you go check out the lockdown sports today podcast hosted by peter bukowski free and available everywhere you get your podcast and also on youtube as peter covers all the realms of professional sports on one show Every single day. Make sure you check it out there. But, Sarah, getting into a conversation now, we're going to focus on the offensive side of the ball. This was actually a question that was brought up during our Twitter Tuesday by M. Hurst, and he had said something along the lines of, which players do you believe that George Payton could look to trade to gain more draft capital? As he said, that is something that he's going to do and inspired a really great idea here. So, it obviously, major mile-high salute to uh, for him for the idea. But let's focus on the offensive side of the ball. Sarah, when you look at the offense right now with all the players there, which players on the Broncos' offensive side of the ball could be potentially on the block throughout preseason, throughout training camp, where George Payton could acquire a little bit more capital? You know, I, I feel like it's going to be more players than people really realize. And at every position group, I think there's maybe besides quarterback, but there's really options all over this offensive roster, right? I mean, there's especially the offensive line. We've talked about even before the NFL draft, we had talked about you, you probably got at least 10 guys that could go into a regular season in the NFL on somebody's roster. And typically you don't keep 10 guys. So uh, the Broncos, I feel like even have more than that now. So I, I feel like Cody, the offensive line is one place where you got to start there and you really can't help but wonder I mean, you look initially when you're in this kind of stage of the off season, when you're talking about trades, you're talking about guys that could be on the block. You always want to look at guys that are in the final year 
of their contract first and foremost, because those guys may or may not be in your general manager's future plans. So the general manager says, this guy's not in our future plans. We don't plan on re-signing him. It would take a miracle for us to re-sign him. I'm not saying that's the case in every single one of these situations, but I think you look at contract players first, and one of the contract players that I think Broncos country would hate to see go is Dalton Reisner. And we've talked about Natani Muti and what Nathaniel Hackett has said about him really being a good fit for this scheme, even though he's more known for his power and his strength. He can really move and, and play in that wide zone type of offense. So maybe Dalton Reisner, after a couple of down years, could he be on the trade block? He's one name, Cody, that I think Broncos fans may need to just brace yourself for this because the offensive line is really deep, and he's one of those guys on there that could be on the block if, if other guys behind him are ready for full-time starting role. I think that is a possibility. I think Reisner makes sense from what you just described there. You know, I mean, we talk about Natani Muti, who's turned head so far this offseason, but there's also a situation. Let's say Calvin Anderson becomes the favorite at the right tackle job for the Broncos. He just returned to practice yesterday. He had a nose procedure. He broke his nose a few weeks ago in practice and is now able to wear protection over his face and play and get reps. And he's been getting reps at the right tackle spot. So if he suddenly becomes the favorite for that job, there's a realistic scenario. Let's say that Dalton Reisner is traded or used, you know, goes on the block. Let's say if Natani Muti's not that guy, what they could do is they could slide Billy Turner over to left guard. That's been something that has been discussed as a little bit of a possibility here for this Broncos team. Billy Turner could play a little bit anywhere. And I think for what we talked about with the athleticism, and I mentioned this on kind of our way too early projecting the offensive line, I actually had Billy Turner at left guard and Calvin at right tackle. So this is a scenario that could be there as well. But then we also take a look at the interior of the offensive line. Lloyd Cushenberry met with the media yesterday. It was great to hear from him. Graham Glasgow is still recovering from the freak injury that he sustained right before halftime in the Cowboys game. Those two guys are anticipated to be the two guys competing at center, right? So if one of those guys doesn't win, could they be potentially traded, sir? I think that's also another great question, but it's also do you want a guy – that can maybe step in and be a starter if someone gets hurt. I mean, it's a catch-22 here. It is, and that's going to be the big question that I think the Broncos front office and coaching staff have to answer because with Cushenberry, you've got two years of team control on a rookie deal, whereas with Glasgow, really, you restructured his deal to get out of it after this year. So he's he, he may not be in the plans beyond this season, but he may also not be very tradable based on his contract right now. So, I, I mean, and maybe that's not the case. Maybe the restructure makes him even more tradable. I would need to do some more digging into that, you know, that whole contract situation. Situation. But if if rookie Luke Wattenberg, Cody, he he's the kind of wild card here that changes things a little bit. If you love what you're you're seeing from him, I think you've got to you've got to at least consider trading one of those two guys to a team that may need some experience at the guard or center position because I, Glasgow can he he can play both right and Cushenberry he's kind of a center only so I, I think that works more so in Glasgow's favor to be dealt to another team if he's going to be a starter this year and like you mentioned if Billy Turner's the starting left guard we're talking all hypotheticals here of course but it's also about the Broncos getting back some some nice return in terms of a trade whether that's that's a, a late round pick or not. They need to get some draft capital back and build, as you've called it before, that war chest. And then the other position that I think Cody could get some attention is the wide receiver position. You've got so many guys there that I think you want to invest in all these guys. There, there's that there's there's gotta be 10, 12 guys that you want to see in orange and blue going forward, but you just can't keep that many. You may keep six, maybe seven if you're getting a little crazy there with your roster. So there could be some wide receivers on the block as well. Seth Williams is a name to watch. Tyree Cleveland, who's been name dropped by Dwayne Stooks. Kendall Hinton, obviously, has been one of those guys that we talked about in yesterday's episode of the show. But then I almost forget entirely that Travis Fulgham is on the Broncos roster. Obviously, for him, right. he played in the NFL. He had a really big breakout stretch for the Philadelphia Eagles just a couple years ago, sir. And we're like, oh, my gosh, hey, this guy's bursting onto the scene here. And he's had a pretty impressive preseason so far, according to Nathaniel Hackett. So I, I, ideally, I don't think we're going to see any moves happen right now during OTAs. I don't even think we're going to see any at the first start of training camp. I think really after the first or second preseason game is when we'll start to see some trade movement here. And I want to go back to an important point here to kind of justify this. When we look at George Payton, his philosophy, when he says, believe it, we're going to have more capital going into next season, 
I firmly believe he's going to do whatever he can. We saw it in the preseason. We've seen it with Kerry Vinson Jr. being traded away. We've seen it specifically even last year with Trinity Benson, who was an undrafted rookie free agent signing, who George Payton acquired draft capital for Sarah. So when I look at guys like Seth Williams, Tyree Cleveland, Kendall Hinton, Travis Fulgham, it makes sense there. But in the preseason and when you have to make these roster cuts, it is better to get something for these players rather than get nothing. And as we see, there are injuries that happen throughout training camp and things, certain positions become a little bit of a priority. And that's when a lot of general managers get on the phone with one another. Heck, we even saw Duke Dawson just a couple years ago traded to the Broncos from the New England Patriots shortly after that third preseason game, right when roster cuts were happening, Sarah. So there is a premium to get really good players on your team, and there could be some teams that could use guys like who we just mentioned there on the offensive side of the ball. But coming up here in just a moment, Sarah and I, we're going to break down some defensive players on the side of the ball. One specific player is making the full-time move to edge rusher, it appears. And could that mean one key edge rusher could be on the trade block this offseason? We take a look at that and much more coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about BetOnline.net, the sponsor of today's episode of the show. And our partners at BetOnline continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. You can find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. And BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and and more so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action bet online where the game starts as we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode of lockdown broncos mile high salute to everybody in broncos country thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen or to watch the lockdown broncos podcast for all your daily denver broncos news content and coverage all year long because for the true fan there is never an off season sarah my friend let's talk about some of the defensive players which could be on the trade block come preseason come the end of training camp and there's a lot of interesting names being floated out there I think when we look at positions that are really loaded Sarah what's one of the first ones that comes to mind edge rusher yeah. loaded loaded there and there's players there. I mean let's take a look at it right now you have Randy Gregory you have Bradley Chubb you have Jonathan Cooper you have Malik Reed you have Nick Benito you now have Baron Browning so ideally Sarah when you look at all these different names there and Chris Allen an undrafted guy when you look at all these names if there's going to be an edge rusher that could be on the trade block, who could it be in your opinion? Who do you think it could be? Could there be more than one? Yeah, I, I, I think about this and I hesitate to even say this because I've been so anti, anti this, you know, for so long. But I think Bradley Chubb's name has to enter the conversation at this point, Cody. We What we heard from Nathaniel Hackett uh, at Tuesday's press conference talking about Baron Browning, he was specifically asked, you know, First of all, how are things going off the edge? They love his potential off the edge. And, and Hackett was basically glowing when he was talking about him, wasn't he? Yeah. And, and then he talked about, well, what, so does that mean he's going to maybe go back to the inside linebacker position or like be a floater? It's it, what he, his words, not mine. His words were in a pinch that that could happen. But that to me does not indicate Cody, like a, a part-time role at one or the other, which we've been kind of like hoping for, I think collectively as, as Broncos country. So if, if Baron Browning is making a full-time switch to the edge, you just use your top draft pick on Nick Benito. You obviously brought back Malik Reed for another year. You got Chris Allen. I'm not saying you have to trade Bradley Chubb, but I'm saying that he could bring you arguably your top pick in next year's draft. I think you could get a second round pick for Bradley Chubb at worst, and maybe a little bit more if a team gets desperate with an injury that comes about. We've seen George Payton strike a trade for an edge rusher with, when he was with the Minnesota Vikings, and we've seen him trade away an edge rusher last year, just last season, Von Miller. He was willing to trade him. So as tough as it would be, I think Bradley Chubb's name has to be kind of at the top of this list right now, just in the realm of in the realm of realism, right? He, he's in the final year of his contract. He would be a, de a desired player by some team because you could tag him theoretically and get two years out of him at the very least. So to me, and I think I, I want to hear your thoughts on Chubb as well too, Cody, because I feel like that's going to be a talking point the remainder of this offseason. 
I think Chubb is certainly a possibility. I think if anybody were to dismiss Bradley Chubb potentially not being on the trade block in a sense come this offseason, I, I think you're sorely mistaken because, as you mentioned, guys entering the final years of their deal. And, Sarah, we look at Chubb. It's a big-time season ahead for him. And there might be a team out there, as you mentioned. Look, I, I've seen when Bradley Chubb is healthy, Sarah, I firmly believe that he is a very, very damn good edge rusher and can offer a lot to the Denver Broncos. But if George Payton – comes in and feels personally that, hey, you know what? I'm rolling with these guys that we've invested in. We're going to switch Baron Browning to edge. We have Jonas Griffith who could step in at the inside backer position at the wheel next to Josie Jewell. And I really believe that Nick Benito can continue to grow while we have Randy Gregory and Malik Reed at this point. I believe that Chubb, Chubb could be that. And as you mentioned, like draft capital, the Broncos don't have a first rounder. They don't have a second rounder in the 2023 NFL draft. So Sarah, it kind of makes a lot of sense when you talk about it. And also, I think M maybe Malik Reed's name could be attached there as well, I think, when we talk about guys who are edge rushers there. But what about the cornerback and safety positions there? Are there any players potentially that maybe could be on the block if certain things happen, if the stars align a certain way? Yeah, I think if the stars align a certain way, and this would be a weird circumstance, I think, and this is just, hey, we're in the offseason. We're talking about hypotheticals. Yes. We're talking about potential situations. Not stuff that we want to happen, but just things exactly. that, hey, it could happen. Exactly, exactly. So let's stay in that lane and say, hey, Michael Ojemudi, a guy that we talked about on yesterday's episode, let's say he has a huge offseason and he looks ready to start opposite Patrick Sertan. Do you go ahead and entertain trade offers for a guy like Ronald Darby, who, like Graham Glasgow, like some other guys, you kind of have an out in his contract after this season. If he's not in your plans beyond this season and OJ Moody looks great, you might be able, at the price point that he's at this year, which is very reasonable, you might be able to get something nice in return for a guy like Ronald Darby. And, and I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying I want the Broncos to trade him. I'm not saying, oh, yeah, they should definitely trade him. I'm saying, like you said, if the stars align a certain way, that could be interesting because you also have the, uh, you know, the young guys behind them. You got Damari Mathis. You got Fion Hicks. You've got Isang Bassi. You've got, you signed Bless Austin, you know, a, after the tryout. You've got other guys at the position group right now that you could potentially you know, justify that kind of a trade. And at the safety position, you've got way too many guys, in my opinion, that are going to be on NFL rosters that you can't cut certain players. You just can't cut guys that are going to be on NFL teams. You got to get value. And I think George Payton will. Well, and I think when we look at the safeties, if we just had to project like a top five safeties on the Broncos right now, you go Justin Simmons, you go Kareem Jackson, you go Caden Stearns, you go P.J. Locke, and obviously you're going to bring in obviously your rookie, you know, D uh, DeLarian Turner Yale as your other guy. So there's your five safeties right there, sir. If the Broncos were five, which they did last season, you had Jamar Johnson who was one of the fifth round picks in the 2021 NFL draft. Didn't get to see much time last season in comparison to a guy like Caden Stearns who really elevated himself from day one during training camp. You also have guys like J.R. Reed who you signed in the off season. There are, as you mentioned, there's so many guys right now in that safety room. Not every single person will make the team. So you know what? If you can find a way to get something for them, you have to do that. And I think that there's a realistic situation here, Sarah, where George Payton, this offseason and training camp or preseason, if he were to offset one to maybe three of these guys that we've talked about, I feel like he could acquire maybe three to four additional picks heading into this year's NFL draft. Oh, and don't forget, there's the NFL trade deadline as well that the Broncos could embrace at some point during this season. So everything is on the table right now for George Payton and this Broncos team. Once again, Broncos country, we're not advocating that the Broncos trade any of these guys. We're just looking at positions, and we're looking at, okay, if the Broncos are to trade anybody based on positional depth and value right now, who are the most likely players to be traded in these situations at this position on this side of the ball? That's simply it. And we want your feedback down below. If there's any players you think that the Broncos could offset this offseason, let us know. Drop a comment down below on YouTube or tweet us on Twitter at Cody Work NFL at Sarah Bettinger at Lockdown Broncos. But Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Lockdown Broncos. Every single day you get Broncos news content coverage here. So thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. And if you haven't done that already, make sure you make us your first listen because we will bring you the up-to-date analysis coverage of all things orange and blue right to your phone or right to your TV, your smartphone, or your computer, the Lockdown Broncos podcast. Sarah Benninger and myself will be back tomorrow. More storylines coming out of OTAs and Dove Valley as the Broncos continue practice here today at the UC Health Training Center.